Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to uh, learn how we can create a dynamic navigation for Power App. So if you are looking at the screen, I have this lap navigation. We are going to learn how you can create uh, a navigation like that. But that's not really the only part that you will learn today. For an example, if you have a requirement where instead of using the left navigation, you want to use the top navigation. So generally what we will do, we will recreate the navigation and start from the scratch. Instead, today I will show you how you can create just one navigation and based on your need, you can reuse that navigation either as a top navigation or as a bottom navigation. So you have this fully configured navigation that allow you to use it as per your app need or as per your user need. So stay tuned. I will walk you through step by step. Okay, the first thing that we will do, we will log into powerapps.com. Here you have multiple options. You can create this navigation as a canvas component or you can create this in your app directly. I'm going to create a component so it is more reusable and you can share with your users. I will click on the component library, uh, new component library, and I'll give a name. Create. Okay, and so this will take you to this screen where you can create your navigation component. So I'm going to rename this. Okay, now because we are creating component uh, for the navigation, we need to define some property for this component. So once you select that on the right hand side, you can click on the new custom property. And the first property we are going to define is menu item. This property will allow users to provide the navigation item, the menu and some menu. It's type input and uh, data type is table. We create another property that we are going to create is nav type. This will help us to define whether it's I'm going to use this navigation component as a left, top, or bottom. And I'm going to use it as a number. Then I will create another property and I will call it is some menu visible. And this property we are going to use to define the width or height of the navigation when we are going to display the sum menu. Okay. And this is a output property type boolean. Okay. And then one more property that I'm going to create is max sub menu. This is also an output property type number. And this property will tell me how many sum menu under a given menu item. Okay. This will also help me to define the height and the width. Okay. So we create these four property for our component. Now from the, from the component, I'm going to select the menu item here. And what we have the default, I'm going to replace that with. Okay. So this is the, the structure of the navigation that we are going to display. What we have here. For each navigation item, we have the ID. The first nav will have the ID 0. The name, what we want to display. Icon, what icon we are going to use. I'm just using the default icon that comes with Power App. Nav link, this will tell me on which screen I should be navigate to when someone click on the that particular item. Then we have sub menu. This is optional. So if for a given navigation, if we want to add a sub menu, we can have this. And again, some menu also have the name and the icon. Okay. And we can also have the name nav link for the sub menu as well. So for each navigation item, you need to define this, this is structure. So in my case, I have home, I have global. This is the ID one, second navigation item. And then we have the calendar settings, health, and it depends on how many nav item you have. The second property that we have is the nav type. So we're going to define one, two, and three. If this property is one, that means this navigation is the left navigation. If it is two, then it is a top navigation. Three, it's a bottom navigation. Okay. So now let's talk about the navigation. Okay. So first thing that we need to add to this navigation, I'll go to the insert and I'll insert a gallery. Now this gallery is going to be responsible for the main menu item. I'm going to change the layout to the title because that's what I need. I'm going to rename this 
but this is my gallery menu main main gallery you don't need this separator so i'm going to delete that okay now next thing what we will do we will give the items so the items are going to be dynamic nav the name of the component dot menu item okay and then we're gonna say this one is the name okay so now you can see all the the main menu name name are displaying here and the icon is going to be this item dot icon okay fair enough right so we have the we have the title and we have the icon both we both are there now let's make some changes to the to the icon here so number one thing that we need we need to make it left alive so I'm gonna say that X should be zero for this icon, okay? And then I'm going to make this little smaller. The size I'm just making 40 and parent dot height, sorry, parent dot template height. Okay, so whatever the height of the parent, that's going to be the height of this icon. Okay, so this part is done. Now we need to add one more image here. You can add icon also if needed uh, in my case if you remember i have this small icon here it's, it's an image so what i'm going to do i'm gonna insert one image and this image is actually gonna show me that that arrow but if you notice so for example right now we are on the left navigation this is the side arrow if i go to the top it's a down arrow and if i go to the bottom it's an up arrow right so we need to make that dynamic uh we need to change this image based on the type of the name so what i did and i'm going to copy paste this into the comment and also a link so that you can download for this i have an svg image okay and i have already have this image so you can just reuse it if you don't want to use svg you can use the icon the only check that you need to do based on the type you need to select the different icon if you want to okay so this part is done and as you can see here the icon is displaying here the second change that we need to do for this icon image is the X position, right? Because we don't want to show it where it is displaying right now. If it is a left navigation, it should be right. If it is a top, then it should have a different different X position. So for that, I have a small formula that you can use. Okay, so I'm gonna select the image, go to the X, and replace this with this formula. And the formula is very simple. Based on the type, one, we know it's the left. So if it's the left navigation, then parent.template width minus self dot width plus five, and these different formulas. This will help to align this image based on the type selected. Similarly, for the by, we are going to use this formula. Based on the type, we are defining the by position for this image. So that is done. Width, I'm gonna just give it 20 and height i'm gonna just based on the type i'm just giving the height for for this one okay so as you can see here it's now correctly aligned you can also update this gallery a little bit so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna change the fill color and i'm gonna use the dark background okay and once i make it dark i need to make sure that my menu icon color is white so you can see that and also the title color should also be white All right so now we have our navigation there now let's talk about the height and width for the main gallery itself right because we need to make sure that this gallery is aligned correctly based on the type selected so first thing that we will do we will update the, the y position for this gallery and I'm going to use another formula and all the formulas that I have is going to be based on that nav type because based on the type selected you need to uh, adjust the height and width and x and y right so what I'm saying if it is 3 that means it's the bottom right so we are saying parent dot height minus self dot height so it will have the the right position uh, at the bottom and other, all other cases should be the zero and x always going to be the zero now let's talk about the width so for width this is the formula that we are going to use if the nav type is one right and if the sub menu is visible that what we are saying the width should be whatever width divided by two else 
whatever the width of this navigation why we are doing this right so if left type is one that means it's the left navigation correct right? if some menu is visible then we need to make sure that uh, the navigation has enough width to show the menu and also the sub menu so we are dividing whatever the width that we have for that map by two in all other case whatever the width that we have set up for the component that's going to be the width of this gallery okay now also one point to notice if you are not planning to use this navigation as dynamic as i'm showing you can discard most of these check when I, where i'm checking the left type and you can set the height width so that will be it will, it will be simpler but again it will not be dynamic then we will go to the height okay so the height formula is also very simple if the nav type is one means it is a left navigation then whatever the height of the component that's going to be the height of this gallery if not then just 55 then one more important part right as of now it is a left navigation so we are good when we're going to change it from left to top or bottom this gallery should be horizontal right so all of these items that we are seeing vertic vertically should be horizontal and how we can do that we can do this using wrap count so right now the wrap count is one that's why you are seeing the, the one column in the gallery if i make it wrap count two as you can see it's not two column if i make it three it's three column so somehow we need to dynamically set this wrap count so when i'm using the left type as a, as a top or the bottom it should automatically adjust so what i'm going to do i'm going to say if name of my component dot left type equal to one then it's one else count rows and what what row we are counting we are counting rows for this gallery so gallery menu dot all items okay so if it is not left navigation then whatever number of rows that we have in this gallery that's going to be my prep count and also the template size i want to keep it to 53 okay so this part is done now let's back to this, this image because we need to do some work here we don't want this to be always visible we only want this to be visible if we have any sub item for this given menu okay so for that first we need to add a gallery for the sub menu so what i'm going to do i'm going to insert another gallery and remember you are not inserting this gallery inside this gallery no we are inserting gallery to the nav so parallel to this original gallery okay and we are going to call it okay and uh, again same thing i'm going to just say title here don't worry about where it is displaying the data source i'm going to set the gallery menu dot selected dot some menu okay so we are saying that the data source for this some menu gallery going to be whatever item we have selected in the main menu and whatever the some menu for that okay and if you remember in our menu item we have the some menu right and it's a, again it's a table so this can map to the gallery Okay, and and after you do that, we're gonna just update this information. So this is for title. So this item dot value dot name. This will be the name of the sub menu. We don't we don't need the separator, so I'm gonna delete that. Okay, and for I'm gonna rename this. So this is the sub menu icon, and this is going to be same. This item dot value dot item because we have that property okay and then few other changes to the gallery of course we want to give a background for this gallery too so i'm going to give a dark color because we are using the dark theme as you can see and then for both the icon and the title i'm going to give the white color so you can see that okay so our our uh some menu gallery is there but it's not properly aligned yet so we need to align it and for that what i'm going to do you're going to use another formula and of course you can just copy paste and type in this formula uh, if you want to so formula is again it is going to be based on our nav type 
So if it is 2, that means it's the top. Then what we are saying, the main gallery template height into the selected ID plus the X of that. And I'll, I'll walk you through what does it mean. So, uh, so the menu gallery template height means height of the template for this gallery and it is 53. Okay. So that's the X. We are multiplying it by the selected ID. And you remember ID we had the 0, 1, 2, 3. And then we are just adding the X. Now uh, let's understand why I'm doing that. This is our top navigation, right? When I click on this button, the sub menu is visible. And if you run, and now you know that this is a gallery, right? The X of this gallery right now is zero. And it is based on this formula. Because the selected ID for first item is zero. So this into whatever the template height is going to return zero. The, the gallery menu X is also zero. Okay, so it will be here. When I'm going to click on the second one, if you notice, it moved from there to here. And how it moved? Now, because we have the second menu item, and now ID is 1. So, the whatever the template height, and template height, you can see the height of this, this box that you are saying from here to this home. This is the template height. So, this template height plus X, it's going to move that sub gallery here. And as you move or add more sub menu, it's going to keep moving. So that's the formula is doing. Similarly, for the one that is for the left navigation, of course, the same. We have the we are just getting the the main menu gallery X so that is zero and adding the template width to that. So when we have the left navigation, the X is not changing right in the left navigation case. So that's why the formula is very straightforward. And similarly for the bottom navigation. So this is the formula to defining the X. This is actually the most important formula of this navigation. Then we have the Y. Okay, so the Y formula is also very similar as we have done the X formula. But in this case, the formula is goes very similar because now we need to move if we are using left navigation, we need to move that sub menu gallery based on our selection. So if I'm selecting the first, it should be on the top. If I select second, it should move down. And that's what happening here. So if nav type is one, that is the left navigation. What we are doing, the template height of the main menu, and if, uh, multiplying it with the selection ID, and then just adding whatever the by for the main gallery. So once I move from first, that is zero, to the one, it's the sub gallery will move to the template height, and it's keep moving down as we move. And for the top navigation. As you know, Y should not change because it's always going to be here. And that's why if you look at the formula, it's very simple. What is the Y of the main menu and the height? That should be the Y coordinate for our uh, sub menu gallery. The only thing is changing if we are at the bottom. Instead of adding, we're going to just minus that. So, right? So it's just above this, uh, this main menu. So these two formula is going to help you to move that sub menu gallery from uh, where you're clicking, it will open there only. Okay, very important. Then we're going to just set the width and I'm going to set the width as whatever the template width for my menu item, that's going to, going to be the width for this one. And the height, it's going to be depend based on the number of item or the number of sub menu you have. If you have just one, then it should be less if you have five sub menu then it should be more so the okay so the formula for calculating the height is very simple we are just gonna count the number of rows in the sub menu and multiplying this by 55 55 is nothing with the template height so if you're going to change the template height for the sub menu you can just add just this number but this will help you to adjust the height of the sub menu okay and the template size i'm going to just set it to 35 okay now we just need to make these uh smaller so i'm gonna say this is 15 and also the i icon that we are showing instead of 60 60 i'll do okay and of course we don't need icon to the right hand side so we need to change the position for this one so i'm gonna say it's zero it should be at the front and width for the title uh, parent dot template height minus icon 
so menu dot width right so what whatever width is remaining is going to give to the title the simple formulas okay and then one thing also i change here the padding for the sub menu icon so instead of 10 i'm going to make it 5 so the icon is a little bit bigger okay now we will stop here we will come back to this one with some more changes but we'll go back to our main gallery okay and as i said at the beginning right we don't want this icon to be display all the time we only need this to be display when we have some sub menu item so what i'm going to do here i'm going to use another formula we are counting the row of this item dot sub menu so if this item in the in this example home or, or if you click on the global the global calendar if they have some menu then we're going to show it if not then we're going to hide it okay so this will take care of showing hiding this particular icon now the most important we need to show hide this sub gallery based on the select of this arrow okay so we will go to the on select and i'm going to paste this uh, simple if logic here okay and i'll walk you through what this logic is saying so we are saying variable current menu what we are checking if the current menu is equal to this item dot id and variable show sub menu is true so what that means when I'm clicking on this one, what I'm checking if variable show menu is this item.id. Initially, the, the show menu is going to be minus one. Okay, so this condition will not be true. And if variable show sub menu is true, this will also is not true because nothing is displayed. Okay, so in our very first case scenario, this condition is not true okay so this will happen we are setting variable current menu equal to this item dot id okay so this item dot id that means this item dot id is going to be zero so this will be zero we were also setting the variable show menu false true so then we are what we are saying that very the sum menu is displayed so when i click what happened right now right now the variable current menu is going to be zero and variable show some menu is going to be true now why i'm doing that because if i click on the global sub menu now logically what should happen the sub menu should change from home to the global okay but if i click again here this should be height so this formula will take here and how now for example if i click it again this is true correct because the current item is zero this item id is zero and this is also true so in this case i'm saying okay if both are true then set the variable show some menu to false correct so if i do this it's just going to hide if i click again it's going to display but if it is already displayed i think if i click on another menu some menu look at that right so it also change from home to this one and in that case what happened this condition was not true some menu was displayed that's true but this was not true so i still went to the second part of this if statement okay so that this formula will take care of showing hiding the sub menu gallery based on what or where you are clicking okay and now if i go to my sub menu gallery and if I go to the visual property of this one, I can easily use this formula. And as you know, we are setting the current menu. If it is minus one, that means it has not set, set it to anything, zero to anything, then we are not going to show it. So by default, your sub menu gallery is going to be hidden. Else, based on the variable show sub menu. So if it is true, it will display. If it is false, it will be hidden. One more thing on click of these uh, different title you want to navigate to that given screen right so very simple i go to the title on select i'll just use the simple navigate this item dot link and that's it now before we go ahead and start testing it the last thing that we need to do and this is actually important if you're going to use this as a pure dynamic component okay if you select your component the dynamic component of the component has the width and the height property 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to give a formula that you can use to set the width and height of this component. Okay. So this formula, what I have defined here, based on the type that you are selecting, this component itself is going to decide the height and width of itself. So when you are adding this component to your app, you don't need to set any height and width. This is very helpful because this way you can dynamically change the behavior of your component. Okay, we might need to change the width for this one. So I'm going to just say uh, minus menu item dot width and minus image two dot width. Okay, this way it will just be aligned correctly. And I'm also going to make it auto height. We set up the dynamic width. Now I'm also going to set the dynamic height for the component. Okay, so this is the formula for height. And uh, as you notice here, if the, uh, the left type is two or three, uh, we are using the simple formula to calculate the, the height of the component. Okay, and uh, if the if the submenu is visible, right, then what we are doing, we are calculating the height dynamically, else we are just keeping it 55. And why we are doing it, and I'll show you why. So let's say this is the top navigation, okay. And uh, when I open this submenu, generally what happens? If I'm not keeping the height, because right now the navigation height is the height of this home and also this gallery. If I'm not, if I'm not gonna keep this dynamic, if I add any button or control just on top, it will not be uh, clickable, okay? So in that case, I'm gonna keep the navigation height as what you're seeing right now, this is 55. But when I click on the sum menu, then only I should be changing the height. Same apply to the left. The left, the height of the navigation is what you're seeing right now, correct, this one. But when I'm gonna click on this left arrow, the width will change. So now width has increased. When I click back, the width has decreased. So you can now have any control just next to after this navigation, the button label or anything, and you can click on that. That's the reason uh, why I'm giving you this formula. This formula will help to help you to dynamically increase or decrease the height or width based on the type you selected of that particular uh, component once we go to the once we use this component we're going to use app dot active screen dot height i'm just giving it 400 right now so you can see similarly for the width very same formula as you can see here okay let's save it and i'm going to publish this this is how you use the, the component you save it you publish that component so it is available for any other app to use and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to makedopowerapp.com and I'm going to create a new empty app. I'll click on the plus icon. I'll go to this get more components. And you should be able to find the newly published component here. Select that, click import. Then you will start seeing this library component. Click on the arrow, select that, and this will add that component to your screen. Okay. Do nothing. I'm going to go back to this dynamic component. And if you look at the height, you notice the formula that we have is already here. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to just remove this 400 and use the app.activescreen.height. Now, if I play, and as you can see, my navigation is ready to go. So let's change the type. Okay. Value here from 1 to 2, all ready to go. Okay. And now if you if I want to use this as a bottom navigation, I can make it three, but then I also need to update the Y coordinate of this one, right? Because if I just do this, uh, if you look at the component here, and if you look at the Y, this should be more than zero, right? It should be on the bottom. So we can just use the one simple formula to move it to the, to the bottom. So I'm, gonna, I'm saying if it is nav type three, then the, the Y coordinate should be the height of the screen minus self dot height if not it's zero so now it is absolutely working as expected as a bottom navigation i can even use those simple button and only thing i'm doing on click of ease i'm just setting this variable nav type variable and for my component nav type instead of hard coding it i'll set it to this variable 
I play. First, I set it to left navigation. As you can see, my left navigation is working. If I click on top navigation, my top navigation is working. And if I go to the bottom, my bottom navigation is working. So that's the, the basic of how you can create these fully dynamic or if not dynamic, then different kind of left, top, bottom navigation, whichever applicable. I'm going to give you the link to download this component if you like to. So you can have it ready. You can reuse it. That's it for today. I hope this will help you. And again, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing to my channel. Thank you. Have a nice day.